Welcome back to the channel. If you are a Cubase user and you have in the past struggled with how to use the Media Bay, I feel your pain. I've been a Cubase user for ages. I think I, I, I've been using Cubase so long that I know every feature inside and out. I've given them all a try and, and some features just have not lived up to my expectations, and one of them is the media bay. But please hear me out here because what I'm going to outline in the next five, ten minutes in this video is a way that composers can use media bay in Cubase to collect your ideas, to make them easily accessible and, and organize them, right, by things like genre, uh, how what the role they play in the music, and actually turn media bay into uh, essentially part of your compositional workflow. This is something that I've been um, trying to develop for a long time and I feel like it's ready for prime time in terms of sharing it with you guys here on uh, my channel. So the main goal for me, if you share, so you can ascertain, does this video pertain to you? Main goal for me is fast music production. I aim to produce two minutes of music, a draft in about an hour. And in order to do that, I have to be able to compile my ideas very quickly and organize them into a form or structure. And I need to spend very little time on things like connecting up instruments and worrying about MIDI channels. All of that gets resolved with this approach. Um, there are a few settings you need to set in Cubase. There are a couple of considerations about how these this media bay export process constrains you to using um, MIDI and instrument tracks, for example. I'm going to talk all about that. And there are some unintuitive aspects to how one needs to go about adding custom tags into, um, into Media Bay, but it can be done. I'm going to show you how that's all done. Okay, so let's get started. I don't like wasting time. Let me take myself off the camera. First things first, let's go up to our settings. It used to be called Preferences. And we're going to go to Media Bay here, and we want to make sure that this Allow Editing in Results list is checked. That is going to be important if you want to follow along with what I'm doing. So hit Apply and then hit OK. Now I've got two things here that I'm going to use in my demo. One is this little piano motif, and let's just play that. Okay, very simple. Now in the background, if you are listening carefully, you're also hearing this little bass drum roll here. So that sounds like this. It's just a bass drum roll, orchestral bass drum. And this MIDI has um, some MIDI CC stuff in it. Let's see, I guess it's got modulation. So you can see it's got this, this modulation curve. Uh, this is built into my instrument, and it, it kind of like basically crescendos the roll for me based on CC1. But all this is going to be saved. So the roll and the MIDI note, um, it, it, even the instrument that it's using, the contact instrument that it's using, all that's going to be saved. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the instrument, uh, or sorry, select the event, right? So selecting the clip here. And I, uh, there's, a, there's a cool feature that's new to Cubase 13. And it is for renaming selected events. You can see it over here, rename selected events. I've actually set that up um, as, a, as a button. You could do that on Stream Deck. You could do it on a Loop Deck. Um, you could do it on a MIDI controller, whatever. I have it set up. And so... I go ahead and I hit rename, and I get this little dialog here. I'm not going to actually rename it bass drum roll, but that's how I named it bass drum roll to begin with. Um, so I do that to the clip first. Then I want to export it as a MIDI loop. Now, if you go to File menu, do Export File, if you have a MIDI event selected in your project window and it is in a an instrument track it, 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 this will be grayed out if it's on a midi track a plain midi track it has to be on an instrument track in which case you can select midi loop i would really say this should be said this should say 
export uh, export to Media Bay because it, it's going. The only place it's going to export this media loop to is Media Bay. So you can you can select that in the menu. But I actually have a button which I have um, set up for that. But I'll, I guess I'll just go through. Um, sorry, export. Media loop, and we get this little dialog here. Now, it's important to open to to click this button that says "Show Attribute Inspector." Now, unfortunately, you can't really customize. Oh, I'm so sorry that it it jumps around like that. You can't really customize the attributes that show up here. There, um, but I do. I actually created my own main attribute called Elements because I like to think about my compositional uh, elements. As things like transitions, is it a motif? Is it a cell? Is it a phrase? Is it a is it a chord progression? Um, those sorts of elements. That's how I compose. I think about these different aspects. I'd think of that drum roll, for example, as a transition. It's it's something that's going to mark time. Um, I might have you know a hi hat or something that I would I would call it pacing. So I actually set up my own attribute. I'll show you how I did that. And I called it elements, and that's how I'm going to organize things here. But the main thing here that you want to keep track of is this very last option, family name. And the reason it's important is that if you double click in it, you can actually add any old value you want. Um, I created something called my ideas. So if I go in here, um, I guess, you know, actually, just before I did this example, I actually had. Um, I had Cubase crash on me, and it looks like some information was lost. So I'm going to double click there. This is actually great because now I can show you what I'm doing. So um, I'm going to go call this My Ideas and hit OK. And that's always going to be an option in my uh, drop down box here when I save a MIDI loop. Um, I'm also going to create a folder structure here. I'm going to, uh, I think I'm doing the drum roll here. So I'm going to call that a transitions. All right, um, just to keep things organized. And in transitions, I'm going to uh, sorry, click through to transitions, create another folder called orchestral. I think it's helpful to know, you know, especially with transitions like a synth riser, I want to keep that separate from a drum roll that's orchestral. I'm going to go ahead and name it bass drum roll. And um, you know, I could go ahead and say set this to percussion, subcategory under percussion, maybe bass drum. These things are pretty optional. It's going to actually put in tempo um, and number of bars automatically, so I don't even put that in. So I'm going to hit OK. Now let's go and look at our media bay. OK, so under media menu, there's media bay. Um, I have a button set to open that up as well. And over here on in the upper right hand, oh, I'm so sorry again. My new computer is kind of jumpy. <laughs> um, if you open up this attribute inspector, you click on defined and you click this cog, you get these little options down here and one of them is to add a user attribute. Now, I've actually already added an, a user attribute. Since other things were deleted, let me go see if my user attribute has survived that most recent crash. It has. So I had created anything that you, if you created something here, you know, under display name, you call it, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then down here under various, you're going to see blah, blah, blah. I created elements. This is man-made. Now, the reason I am not just creating um, another example to show you guys is that I, I really am not clear how to how to delete these. Um, so you don't want more. You don't want to just create these trial and error. And I think to go and remove these is kind of a pain in the butt. So um, I just created elements. And over here in my main window, I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to select from this drop down box, and I'm going to go down to various and choose elements. Okay. Now, I don't have any elements uh, so far, but I, I'm going to show you. that That's how I created that. Okay, I am going to go turn this into um, 
uh, where is it? Category and subcategory uh, is probably about the way that I would do it. But this last one over here, I want to set it to, um, I think it's family name, right? That's where I set my ideas. And the nice thing is here now, I can just scroll through this last one looking for the, the value my ideas. Oh, there it is. And that's going to show me only, regardless of anything else I've selected, it's only going to show me the things that, that because I, I when, because I set my, my ideas as the family name when I did the original export MIDI loop. Now, if you want to see what your definition is for your item, you can also go in here. It's, it's playing it back in the background. Um, you can actually go and see what these values are right here you can see like the path where is it located um, you can see what the different values are and you can actually change these values if you wanted to from this attribute inspector but mostly what i want to know is i want to be able to navigate back to this thing as a transition quickly from my attribute browser so the way i'm going to do that is i need to actually add an attribute for element so i in, if I want to see element be one of these columns here, right? My my new um, my new scroll all the way down here. This thing down here, various elements. If I want to see that uh, in my columns here, so that I can set a value for it, then uh, what I need to do is I need to click up here, this little cog called setup result columns. And I'm going to go to various, and I'm going to add elements. And that's going to, unfortunately, add it all the way at the end where I can't see it. So I'm going to bring that over, right, like so. And because we had gone earlier in this demo into our Cubase preferences, and we had said allow uh, editing and search results, I can come in here now, and I can just double click, and I'm going to type in transition right let's see about so I, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to uh, just do a, a reset there um, that only resets this is the kind of thing that drives me crazy about media Bay. that only resets these values up here it does not reset these values down here i mean i think it's weird you got one reset button one reset button here they do different things i don't know why but whatever that's that's not that's not what we're talking about. So now I can see transitions here under my ideas. So anytime I have um, my ideas selected, I'm really only doing that in the event that I've got something new and I want to assign an element to it, because I'm not able uh, when I go into let's do this with an, with another one. Say I grab this piano motif, and I want to go ahead and export that to a MIDI loop. You're going to see there's really no way for me to make sure that one of these attributes here is my new element. I can't do that. So the best thing I can do, the only thing I can do, is select my ideas. And I'm going to go, let's say, up here to Transitions. I'm going to create a new folder called Motifs. And inside Motifs, um, I don't know, maybe I'll say Moods, right? And I'm going to call this Pensive. And I'm going to set the character to Piano, or sorry, Category to Piano. And that's all I'm going to do. I've got my ideas set down here. And so that my ideas really winds up being a main flag for me so that I can organize these things. Um, so I go to Media Bay, open that up. and since I if I if I undo transition, you can see now because my ideas is selected, I've got both my original bass drum roll and pensive. I can uh, this is not a transition, so I'm going to double click and I'm going to say motif. Right now, if I do a refresh up here, I get motifs and transitions. Um, now the nice thing, one of the nice things about using Media Bay is that let's say I'm in a new project and I want to go and I want to find 
uh, some ideas. This is where I, I'm starting, let's say, at the beginning of my hour, and my goal is, okay, in the next hour, I'm going to produce a draft, and I'm looking for pensive, right? So what I'm going to do is open up Media Bay. I'm going to, I don't even have to have my ideas select anymore. I've got elements here, and I can look right at my motifs. And I can be like, oh, I've got a pensive motif. You know, presumably, hopefully, I'll have a bunch of different motifs. If I'm looking for transition, oh. So you can see the other categories that are selected here. But m the most important for me is how I use the music and that I can quickly open up Media Bay and I can access it. In order to do that, I need to set up the custom um, attribute, which I called Elements. Again, a warning, don't just create those arbitrarily because they, they as far as I can see, can't really be deleted easily. Um, but then I open up Media Bay, I'm at the top of my hour, and I, I drag in a bunch of stuff. And you can see, um, if, if I just drag this pensive into a new track, let's say down here, it not only brings in the MIDI, right? And along with any, um, it would bring in any MIDI CC. It's going to bring in effects that are uh, installed on the inspector over here. But it's also going to bring up this instrument. You know, this just happened to be the contact instrument that was loaded on the track when I saved it. It's going to load that up for me again. So it's going to play it back, and I'm going to hear it. And I'm going to immediately remember, oh, yeah, I remember what I was thinking there. I remember what I was after. So I can just compile these things. And before I know it, I've got a draft very, very quickly. So if you have any questions on this, please do post in the comments. I will get back to you. I'm going to cover more and more on Cubase. This is not a far departure from my other videos on uh, Dorico. I use Dorico and Cubase very much together. I've done some videos on syncing the two, but I also am able to uh, take MIDI clips from one and get them into the other, which I will cover in the future. But if you have questions on how this particular workflow around MIDI Bay it works, please leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for supporting my channel, and I will see you again very soon. Thanks.